Hey, I'm Daniel Lee with Average Joe's Entertainment. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The main reason that you're here at CRS this week is the current single, Head Over Heels. Correct. And what is the what is the vibe what, that you're getting from everybody? What's the reaction? Um, well, well, the reaction is, is uh, you know... It is. It's a, it's a radio song. I'm not. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's uh, the most radio friendly song I think um, that I've wrote for uh, the record. To be honest with you, and um, you know the story is the storyline behind it is not being afraid to fall in love. And of course, I'm speaking from a more sensitive side of my writing than I usually do. So, yeah. well, the first time I talked to you one of the things that I said about that particular song and I actually told you like don't take this the wrong way mm -hmm. is if somebody had given me those lyrics on paper mm -hmm. and I don't hear the song and right. I just see the lyrics I probably go, would go yeah I don't know right <laughs> And I have since used this song as an example of, one, the power of simple lyrics. If you can say something simply, don't try to make it complicated. Right. Just say what you feel. And I think, specifically in this song, the power of your performance makes that song what it is. Well, I appreciate that. Is that something that you uh, see too? I, I do. I think, um, first of all and foremost, me as a, an, a, a writer, you know, I never would put anything out there that I think was just absolutely, you know, cookie cutter or anything like that. But I mean, I do, I do know that it goes on, that that people do do it. And what I wanted to do with Head Over Heels is prove that exact point that you just made. And um, it, it is a simple lyric song, but it also has a lot of heartfelt behind it. It definitely does. And what I, I've listened to this song so many times because I was trying to figure out what is it that draws me to this song so much when on paper, you mm -hmm. know, I'm thinking it's it's lighter than right. the stuff that I, the other stuff of yours that I love so much. This is a little lighter in, in writing. What is it? And one of the moments in the song is that first line where you said, you know, not ever, ever have no, I never, this ever. to me. Yeah. The way you say me. Mm -hmm. It's just such a the emotion in just that one word. It's like me, like this is happening to me. Exactly. Like, really? And, and and that's kind of where the song comes from. I mean, it's like you're pretty much talking to yourself, or I was talking to myself, you know, and I was writing it down. You know, the best way to to handle things for me is to write it down. And it, sometimes it turns into a song like Head Over Hill. Sometimes it's just writing it down. You know what I mean? And and I couldn't believe it that, you know, something like that had happened to me so soon after I just got out of something. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. It's, it's like, holy hell. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, that's where it comes from. Yeah. And we've talked before about the authenticity in your work, mm -hmm. which I think speaks in every song, even in something that I might consider slightly lighter. But then there's the heavier things like, you know, the um, struggle bills and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The... Where do you look for authenticity in a world where we are constantly surrounded by a lot of things that are not? Um, I don't really look for it. And I think that's where people go wrong, is looking for something when, you know, they want to sound like this or they want to sound like that. You know, I think the word authenticity, if I can even say it, it's been a long day, but, um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't strive to, to look for it. I think it just comes, you know, and and I think that's one of the main reasons why it works for me. So, and diversity, that's what the biggest thing I wanted to do with this, my first record, is show everybody what I got. There's more than one bullet in a different chamber, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. All right, and I will be spending a large portion of this year talking to people about happiness and success. Right. I think the definition of success tends to change for people as they achieve different things in their life. What is your working definition of success currently for this phase of your life? Um, actually, I'm never wanting to be uh, number one with a bullet. You know what I mean? That's, not, that's never been my goal. My goal is to uh, be happy doing what it is that I love doing, and that's playing music to people and being able to relate to them through my music. That's success for me. 
Mm -hmm. And the more the merrier. The comment you just made saying I never wanted to be, you know, number one with a bullet. There's a comment Jack Ingram made. Or he only admitted it later, but he said he was almost afraid of having a hit song mm -hmm. because he was afraid of being a one-hit wonder. Right. And if he never got a hit, he never could be a one-hit wonder. And it was just that I loved him for his honesty, for mm -hmm. admitting that, because I think it's a hard thing to admit. But that level of almost kind of fear and insecurity about that is that something you feel absolutely or? and it's funny that you say that i don't know if i've told you that before the story that leroy parnell uh he's, he was writing in the session and he uh he looked at me and says man you may have a great future ahead of you and be very successful he said this is the music business this ain't like any other business out there he goes, and he does a squiggly line on a piece of paper. He just draws it out on a piece of paper. And he goes, this is the music business. He goes, this is where you want to be, right in the middle. So, and I think that I, I took that and I ran with that. I think what he was trying to say is that, you know, just have a steady career. You don't You don't have to be on top, but you don't want to be on the bottom either. You know what I mean? Because once you go to the top, the only place to go is the bottom. Yeah. It's down. You don't have to go all the way, yeah. but, but you know what I mean. So, and I think... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's where I get that from. So yeah. number one with the bullet, I ain't searching for that. I just want to be successful, do what I love. So it's longevity rather than the bright flash? Yes, absolutely. I mean, when when you say one-hit wonder, you know, that's exactly what I don't want either. It's because I, I don't want all that. I don't want to have all that at one time. I'd rather spread it out, you know what I mean, and enjoy it. Instead of just like taking it all in at one time, you know what I mean? I think that's what kills a lot of people. And I often think, and I've seen this happen, and I'm sure I'll see it again, that the things you have to allow into your career to get that number one are often a step too far for a lot of people. Um, there's always an overboard, you know what I mean? Um, and it's hard for me being, I want to say genuine, because... You know, being yourself, and it's there's always going to be something that somebody wants to change about you. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing to do, the biggest and the hardest part of it all is saying, no, I want to be me. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's almost impossible to do. But you got to strive to do it. Yeah, and at the same time, as something that we have talked about previously, too, is still understanding that there is that, that reality of how the music business works. If you, if you think that and i'll say that to any artist if you think that's not true then you already in the wrong business you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> so yeah definitely the so let's hypothetically let's assume that somebody comes to you and offers you a deal that is everything you want and but within that framework of you know you need to make a couple of changes what is the stuff you never would want to give up what is what is the stuff that you would never give up for my creativity as an artist I mean, I mean that's what we're doing here, right? I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's if you're gonna say you're gonna stop or make me slow down on creating what it is that I want to do as an artist, as a singer, as a writer, I think you're just going to uh, that's gonna be a definite no for me. You know what I mean? Uh, it's one, one of the reasons why I signed with Average Joe's in the first place. My first record, we went in, and 12 out of the 13 songs on that record I wrote co-wrote with somebody and that's huge for me that was a big deal for me and I think that was more big of a deal for me than it was just actually getting the record deal yes yeah, so the allowing the creative control mm, yes allowing creative control would be the word one of the things that I like every time we talk this is you strike me as you're level-headed and yes ambitious but also realistic so you oh, seem absolutely. to have found that that place where you fit to what do you attribute that is it were you just simply born that way is it a lessons you've learned along the way is it watching other people get it wrong all of that all of that i mean this is one of the the, the best thing that i've learned believe nothing you hear and half of what you see because ultimately it's the truth and and, and that's all i'm about i'm never going to lie about anything i'm going to tell you the truth and I think that's the way a lot of people should be. It, yeah, absolutely. I am a huge fan of that, honestly. <laughs> um, but it's it's sometimes hard to come by. Uh, yes, it is. In this industry. There are a lot of people who I think 
have sold a part of themselves at mm -hmm. some point, and therefore they almost can't believe that you're not doing that. It's, it's, it's an exception. It's making them, making exceptions, you know what I mean? I think some people, you know, they get the thing where you can have this, but you got to do this, or you can do this, but you got to have that, and I ain't about that, you know what I mean? And a lot of people can sit here and tell you that, but I'm telling you. I, I didn't come to Nashville. I didn't move here to, to pursue a career. I still live in Georgia. You know what I'm saying? I am a, I'm truly an artist, and that's what I believe in. And you're, I think you're a songwriter first. Absolutely. Um, and that's what, it, when I say artist, I think songwriting is, I would say, 60% of that. You know what I mean? And, uh, and that's definitely my strong point. Yeah. What is one thing that you think, since the new record came out, because I, I remember when we talked about the record at the time, it was, you, you said, you made this comment, you're never going to have another debut album. Right. You know, there's, a, there's a, one of those things that you just do once in your life. Since that day when we talked, what is something that you've learned that you almost wish you knew before you started making that record? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question right there. Um, you know, I learned a lot about uh, getting the music out there. One thing that I really wish I knew was the key, you know, of how to get it out there to people. I mean, you can put it on anything on social media, but if nobody looks at it, then what's the point? You know what I mean? So, and that's what I'm slowly still learning is how to do, is how to get my music in the hands of the people that would listen to it. You know what I mean? And that's really hard. It is the hardest thing. Yeah. And the competition is so fierce. Well, not listen to it, but appreciate it. You know, I've seen great artists. I've seen great artists that will sing a song and there's no response. You know what I'm saying? But they're in the wrong room. Finding the right room is what you got to find. You know, it's hard. Oh, I see. So you're talking about finding the audience that connects with what you want to say. Right. And that's... And they're struggle? out there. They're out there. Yeah. It's been a struggle. They're out there. But I think um, people get a perception in their head of what it is that you're doing. And, and they go way beyond where you're actually at. You know what I mean? And I think some people, where they mess up is they try to live in those shoes portraying that view of saying hey i actually am you know a million dollar you I'm know a big deal, yeah, big yeah. deal whatever you know man that's uh uh that's the wrong thing to do it's the wrong thing to do that's interesting i want to explore that um because i think there's it's a, almost a slightly human thing to do as well where you think if I want to be perceived as this particular thing I have to act like this particular yes. thing and you they look at other artists so oh I need a bus and I need laminates and I need this and I need all this is stuff. that is that on I don't have a bus I don't have a bus <laughs> I have a van. I don't want a bus because I'm going to have to pay for that bus. Exactly. <laughs> Give me a van. Hey, look, a van and a good van. That's all I need. Yeah, but I think it's. I think you touched on something that's really important. I think people try to portray yeah. a stereotype. Absolutely. And then lose. Because they think it works. Yeah. And ultimately, you know as well as I do that this business changes every day. And eventually, it's not going to be the same. And keeping up with that and those days of the buses and you know all that and the perceived it's it's over with you know yeah. it's it's done you know let's move on let's let's get it let's get back to what it really is here it's the music you know what i mean and i think artists new artists old artists all of them we need to, we need to all do that i've been starting to see a shift again back to a, a need for more authenticity and I think it's not only in music, but just simply in the world. We had a couple of years where everything became social media and technology, and people are, are moving back to you know refurbishing old cars. Right. And, you know, having vintage clothing stores are you know the biggest selling clothing stores. Absolutely. Uh, there's this hunger, I think, again for the more organic things. Is that something you feel when you're on the road? Absolutely, and uh, I'm one of those people. You know what I'm saying? I want that. I want to have the normal back, you know what I mean, and be normal. I mean, let's face it, the, the way social media is today, we're getting deep into this, I know, but the way social media is, I mean, if you do not keep up with people, if you don't post something, you know, what 
then it's out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. And if you're in that much sight all the time and then you go away for just a day, it's a dramatic drop. I mean, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of people are starting to see that. Yeah, somebody brought up earlier today, she said it when, when that becomes how you live your life, you lose yourself. Exactly. So she's all about, you know, wanting to have craft parties with her girlfriends and, and just hanging out in her garden and, and planting some stuff and doing right. those real things that she had kind of almost expecting. Like, I, if I'm a music artist, I can no longer do these things because that's mm-hmm. not what musicians do. Right. And now she realizes, hey, I can still be myself. Right. This is great. Industry is changing, and I think it's changing for the best and the worst. And I say that because, you know, on one side of the fence for the artist, it's great. On the other side of the fence for the artist, it's terrible. You know, as far as music, um, you know, pretty soon you're going to be giving your music to people just so they can come to the shows and, and see you perform. And I really, I think, you know, to an extent that's it's okay because music is what people strive to get, you know. So, But, I mean, for the industry, that's terrible too. And yeah. it's also good. Because you know they're I mean? not going to want to invest anymore. Exactly. And everybody loses. Right. Because the, the, I think especially that point of getting people to appreciate music in the sense of, you know, I'm going to spend money on it. That mm. you just brought up. I think that's also started to seep into live performances too. Especially venues sometimes think, oh no, I just want a band and we'll pay you a percentage of the bar. Right. Know, that stuff. Rather right. than... We appreciate that you spent years getting to this level, so we're going to pay you a fee and then a percentage of the bar. Um, exactly. I mean, is, are you seeing that out there? Is that getting better? I'm seeing my music already on uh, things like Spotify, things like that. I'm already giving my music out for free. You know what I mean? And me as an artist, financially, is a strain. Sure, it's going to be. But what this is. The music business, it's always going to be a strain. There's always going to be something else. And I think as, as an artist playing in venues and stuff like that, I've heard it a thousand times. You're a great band, but I can get a band that can come in for 50 bucks and do, you know, that's fine, but you're going to get a $50 band. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, yeah, I, I see it. I see it everywhere. But I also see things starting to be like, People are not coming to see that $50 band. You know what I mean? It gets back to the real artistry here. Let's talk about artistry here. Let's bring me in. Let me show you what I can do kind of thing. And yeah, so you can good. go for the more, I don't want to say disposable, because these people also learn how to play music, but the, the slightly less accomplished bands. But ultimately, over time, you went out. The you get real, what you pay for. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I, come back to you. Yeah, and the thing about it is, is that everybody's got pay dues. I'm still paying mine, you know what I mean? And I've got no, there's not anything wrong with that. I'm still going to pay them, but as long as we get back being happy and being successful with it, yeah. you know, that's that's the big part for me. Yeah, definitely. I've been finishing with this question. Which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life? Complain. It's hard as a songwriter because you write your own soundtrack. Com- but other complain. people's songs. <laughs> oh, other people's songs. That you feel represent you, songs that you connect with. Oh, my God. Um, you know, that is such a hard question. There's so many good songs out there. Oh, um, God, I don't know. That's that's tough. I'd, other people's songs. You know... I love my guys, Cadillac 3, you know what I mean? Whiskey Soap Redemption yeah. is a great oh, song. Great song. Um, and then, you know, if you got your bigger artist, I really don't know. I mean, all I can do is write it in a song, Leonard Skinner. That's me. Yep. I see that. Definitely. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, right. be the one. Thank you. Thank you.